Okay, so today we're doing a core practical on how to uh, use uh, a microscope to see the stages of mitosis. And it's all about preparing a slide of something where we've got some cells which are undergoing mitosis. And what we use is the root of a fast growing uh, either onion or garlic clove because the roots are places where there's a large, num a large amount of mitosis going on. So mitosis is cell division, cell division is growth, so since these roots are growing, and these roots basically only been growing over the last few days, they've basically taken a uh, garlic clove uh, and they've just dangled it over the top of a test tube of water and then over time the roots have basically grown down towards the water. Now we only want the very tips of the roots because that's the place where we are getting uh, the most mitosis. And so during the whole practical, one of the most important things is that we keep an eye on what side is the tip of the root. Okay, and that's going to be something very important to keep track of. So in the first section, this is a multi-step practical, the first section we are going to prepare the root by softening the cell wall using hydrochloric acid. And we've got, you need a cutting tile, uh, just to help you, you've got a mounted needle to move things around and forceps. Uh, tweezers, sorry, and you've got uh, some hydrochloric acid, a boiling tube, okay, and later on you're going to need a watch glass and a slide and some other bits and pieces that we're going to collect. Now I just need to get a scalpel blade because we also need a scalpel. I see. So, we've got a scalpel blade, and uh, be careful with these, we are cutting on the white tail, that's a safety procedure, so be careful, be aware that when you're writing practicals up or quoting in the exam, that's uh, an area of safety. So, first thing you need to do is take one of these roots. You can do one or two, but I think we've only got enough roots to do one. And just cut about one centimeter off. Now at this point, take the time to realize that you've got two ends there. You've got one that you've just cut, which is flat, and one that is the end, that's the end of the root, which is tapered or bullet point. You're gonna to have to remember which side is which. So you're gonna take a hydrochloric acid. You need about 10 milliliters, doesn't have to be precise. I'm just gonna Put some into a measuring cylinder. Should be wearing goggles while using the hydrochloric acid. And the job of the hydrochloric acid is it's going to interact with the cellulose cell wall and it's going to break it down. What's the technical name of the process of breaking down the cellulose into uh, glucose, like any uh, carbohydrate into glucose? What's the, pro what's the chemical reaction to form glucose into uh, starch? Condensation, what's it to break? Hydrolysis. hydrolysis. So basically we're doing hydrolysis of cellulose, which you'll learn more about in topic four. So you're gonna put that in there. Now if you want, you can actually do this bit with a couple of people. You can share the test tubes, because you don't really need. So if you wanna do one test tube between two, okay? And then cut a few roots. And then you're gonna do the preparation individually. So we're gonna take this, and I want you to drop it in, but make sure you actually do drop it in you don't want it to stuck to the side. There you go. Now make sure it's floating nicely in there. And now that's going to go in the 60 degree water bath because that's going to increase the speed of the chemical reaction uh, for five minutes. And at the end of that, the basically the cell wall and also the material that holds the cell together, uh, the what we call the, the uh, middle lamella, is going to start basically softening and allowing us to much easier, like cooking your veg, okay? It's make it much easier for us to squash this and make a thin film of cells. Okay, so this is gonna go in for five minutes. Okay, step two. So we've retrieved our hydrochloric acid and root from the water bath. It's been in there for five minutes, so it should be nice and soft. At this point, it's very delicate. So from the next point, we have to be careful because it can be very easy to break this. So what we're gonna do is you can use the sink or you can use a beaker. You're going to very carefully and slowly decant this off to uh, make sure we don't lose the root. I recommend you do it into a beaker for the simple fact it could happen that you could pour it down the sink. And you don't want to do that. Okay, and you'll lose your root. So we're going to do that and then comes the fiddly part. So I'm going to pour that out. Keep an eye on where your actually root is. So you should be able to spot where it is because it is quite hard to see there. There's mine. Okay, and pour it away. 
Now comes the really tricky bit. That requires a bit of patience. Using a pair of tweezers or the mounted needle, you're going to retrieve the root tip from the tube. Be very careful, don't try and squidge it because it is delicate and I've just broken it there. Not a great example. Actually, what I've got there is I've got two parts there now, and I know that's the end of the root. And this is the tip here because it's been cut into two. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to place it into some cold distilled water and that water is going to then just remove any of the hydrochloric acid and stop the chemical reaction and we're going to leave it there for five minutes. I'm just going to put a few drops of this cold distilled water over the top and just leave it there for five minutes. And again it's not too bad. Um, I haven't lost it, I know exactly what bit's the tip, but if it does break up, do be careful to get the pieces and try and remember which part's the tip. Once you've done that, you leave it there for five minutes and then we'll get to the next stage, okay? Okay, we're in the last section then. All right, so we still need to wear goggles while we're using the stain. So now we've got our intact root tips, so I've borrowed one from someone else, and we have got our white tile again, these are now had their, they're now very soft because of the uh, action of the um, hydrochloric acid. And so we're very careful when we take them out. And this is the bit where you have to look very carefully at them and you have to decide which end is the root tip and which is end is the end you cut. To do that, you've got to put them down on the white tile. And then look very closely to see which end is a tapered bullet point, okay? Might be quite difficult to do. So one end is going to be basically look like a bullet point. It's not easy to see on the white tile as well. Uh, and one end is a kind of flat cut end. If you get the wrong end, you're not going to get a very good slide because the tip is where all of the uh, all of the um, mitosis is occurring in cell division. So we only want the end two to three millimeters, okay, precision this, and we want to have a slide ready. So if you've got more than one, you can actually make more than one slide up. Ideally, we'll have one per student. So I'm going to take the end two to three millimeters and just chop that off with my scalpel. It's on the scalpel blade, okay. I'm going to go to my slide. I want to make sure my slide is clean. The way we used to clean these, can't do this here, is we used to clean them by uh, dipping them in ethanol and setting fire to it, which was great fun. But for yours, don't put your fingerprints on them, okay? And you might just want to wipe it across. There shouldn't be anything, hopefully, on it. Just try and avoid getting your fingerprints in the middle. And then take your end part, and you're going to just drop it right into the center. And it's fiddly. Now comes the fun part. Take the blunt end of the needle, okay, and you're going to squash it. Now a flat pencil could also be used for this. And this process, I know it sounds like it's simple, but this process is probably the most important process in the whole thing. Because if you do it too much, then basically you'll end up all stuck to here. If you do it too little, you won't get a thin film of cells. The idea is to lightly put it down and twist to kind of squish it out into a film that ideally is one layer thick that you'll enable you to see, okay? So don't go at too much, just push down hard and just squash. And as you're squashing, just move around slightly to spread out the material. Again, try and keep it all centrally located. Some of it's gonna end up on the end of this, but that's okay. The idea is that with a light microscope, you can't see through several cells thick worth. And the better you do this, the better the end result will be. Now we need to stain these because the stain will attach to the chromosomes. That's why chromosomes are called chromosomes because chroma means color. And the stain we're gonna be using is one of two stains you could use this. Both of them you need to remember. This one is called toluene blue, 
Okay, I find this one the easy one to remember because it's phonetically spelled. The other one is orsine ethanoic stain or acetic orsine, which is a yellow stain or an orange stain. This one's blue stain, uh, not to be confused, methylene blue. Okay, toluidine blue, and it will stain everything, including you. So take care and keep your goggles on while you're doing this. So you're going to just put one drop and only one drop. And when I say one drop, I do mean one drop. So aim for the centre. Just allow gravity to do its work and let it just drop off of the pipette onto that centre. Would help if I had a pipette that worked. The pipette's not working. Let's just use this pipette. You want that much, you really just don't want much at all. Okay? Again, be very careful. So now we're going to leave it on there for about a minute. There it is. Um, I don't think you need to leave it for as long as it says on the practical for two minutes. I think minutes fine. And then once you've done, uh, left it for a minute, take the corner of a paper towel and just very lightly, do not wipe over, just very lightly touch the surface to start soaking away some of the excess. Then when you've done that, take your cover slip and just drop your cover slip sideways. So put it like that and then drop it sideways onto there. Make sure you've only got one because they're very thin. Okay, so I'm gonna take, again, don't try not to touch them in the middle. So I'm gonna take my paper towel. I'll probably leave it for a bit longer than this, but as we're just doing a demo. Just try and soak some of it away using the corners of the paper towel. Again, I don't want to disturb the actual cells. Yeah, it just basically sucks it in. And then, once you've sucked away quite a bit of it, take your thing, just drop it on from the side like this. You basically put it down its edge just drop it and now what you can do is take put it on your piece of paper towel fold the paper towel and just very lightly just touch it on the edges like that and what that will do is it will draw out any more excess dye around the edges don't squash just kind of dab lightly it'll also remove any other excess dye you've got around the slide which you don't want to get on your fingers, and you'll get a nice clean finished slide. At that point, we don't need to wear our goggles anymore. We're ready to start doing the microscope work. Okay, so we've got the final stage now. This is where you see if your hard work's all paid off or whether you've lost your root tip slide, which does happen sometimes. Uh, we are going to actually observe this, and you've all used the microscope before, so hopefully you're familiar, but we're going to go through the basic practices. So first of all, uh, make sure it's plugged in and turned on because you want the light on. These are light lamp microscopes. We've got our light over here and we've got our, um, it's not turned on the wall. There we go. And we're, just, we're not using a mirror, so it's going to be, going to be nice uh, to see them. We're going to start on the times, um, on the times four lens with times 10 objective lens, which means a total magnification of 40. 40, okay, four times 10. And then we're gonna do most of our hunting around on the yellow lens, and then we might do some precision work using the blue lens if we find something particular. So we're gonna put our microscope slide underneath and secure it using the uh, pins. What's really good if you've got a really posh microscope is you get one that have got powered stages where you can actually turn the dials and it goes around. We're gonna do that by hand. You can do a lot of kind of moving things around by hand. And then you're going to Put, to make sure you're using the gross focus dial here to move the stage as far up as it will go. Okay, and then you're going to look down the microscope and just move it down until you get it focused. At this point, the cells are pretty indistinguishable. You can just see the cells, you can't see any detail, it's far too small. So, we're going to go up to the next magnification. Okay, now at this point. 
you shouldn't need to use the gross focus again. One of the biggest problems we've used micro is if people use the gross focus when they've got a long lens on and the lens goes smash into the slide, okay? So if you ever get lost or you get out of focus, reverse the process, go back to the lowest lens, focus it, go to the next lens and find focus it. So you're gonna use the fine focus, which is a small dial here. That's actually turned out quite well, this one. Now the fine focus actually isn't gonna work perfectly all the way because of the way the microscope's designed on this one. So I'm gonna to have to use the gross focus a little bit. Now I can see lots of cells there and what you to see them really well, you will see some have separated out. And I'll show you that under the camera in a minute. And I actually you might even already be able to see one that's undergoing some sort of mitosis. This would be great. Teacher's luck. And now you've found something interesting, you want to turn to the blue lens. And probably even the blue lens will produce something you can search on. The blue lens is times 40 times 10, so that's times 400. Now, now you have to be very careful not to ever use the gross focus. Okay. You also notice that when you go up the lens, it will have the unfortunate problem that the light gets cut down. And if you need to adjust the light, Underneath here, you've got a disc. And these aren't very sophisticated ones, but they're basically just a hole. And you can turn the hole around and select which size hole you want. And that will control the amount of light that comes through. Too much light, and it will look washed out. Too little light, and it will uh, you won't be able to see anything. Okay. And what you're looking for distinctively is these patterns Okay, in mitosis. You're looking for the great pattern of having... Uh, prophase is the hardest to see. Prophase will just look like, instead of a solid nucleus, it will look mottled, where they, they've begun to condense. Anaphase and telophase and metaphase, are, well, sorry, metaphase is easy to spot, because you've got them all in a line, so all the chromosomes will be in a line. Anaphase is going to look like two spiders looking at each other, okay? And telophase is probably the hardest. Telophase is one where you've got two cells, that are two nuclei in the same cell, okay? And that's probably the hardest one to spot. Usually where you've got one point of mitosis, you usually find other points of mitosis close by. If you've got a smartphone with a camera, which most of you have, it's actually really easy to take pictures. And the way to do it is you take one hand like this and kind of rest it against the side of the microscope to give yourself some stability, because otherwise you just basically, it wobbles around. Then slowly point towards it and then get it quite close. It's fiddly. But you can get some good results. Okay, so if you find something really interesting, snap it with your camera phone and we can upload it to the Google Classroom. So this is our sample on times four magnification, on times 10 magnification with the times, uh, times 10 lens and times four, so times 40 magnification. And then we're going to move up to times 100 magnification. Again, you still can't see all of the cells in detail, but they're nicely spread out. So I'm gonna pick a nice group of cells. And finally, let's push it up to the times 400 magnification. And there we can see plenty of cells. And now it's just a case of hunting around until we find one that's in a stage of mitosis. <laughs> and just there in the center, just where we've got the arrow, we have a cell in what? What phase is that? Anaphase. Anaphase, because you can see two spiders kind of pulling apart from each other. So that's on our times 400 magnification.